Let's see how heavy this thing is. Ah, oh, what a lump. That's a big old motor. Welcome to episode 10 of the Porsche 928 EV8 project. And a lot's been happening. Um, the MG's out, getting its electrics looked at. As you can see, the motor's come out, so on today's episode, we'll just have a quick look at getting the motor out. That was no easy task. But other interesting things happening today, there's a Tesla Model S coming up to auction. It's a written off car, it's a high mileage salvage car. It's got busted suspension and broken wheels. I don't know what's happened. It's had some, it looks to me like it's fallen off a transporter. But it will have dual motors. It's a 70D, two Tesla S small drive units in it. That would be really helpful. It's also got a decent sized battery pack, 70 kilowatt hour, 66 usable. And the Model S's battery packs are really good ones because they're a right form to fit in this. So right now, Wayne's going down the path of MG batteries, Tesla motor. We're looking at going down the path of totally MG, just transporting, reshelling that MG into this car. But it would be good to have all those Tesla bits available just so we can see what happens with Wayne's car and be adaptable. In any case, we want this thing to really perform, and if the MG motor's not up to it, I'd love to have a couple of Tesla small drive units sitting around. So, subject to funds being available, we're going to bid at the auction today, and I think that'd be really cool to have that. I think I can devote 10 grand maximum. It might go for five, it might go for 20, because these cars are quite popular for home solar power and that kind of thing. The modules are very usable, very saleable. So if you could get it for 10 grand, it'd be an absolute bargain. So let's try and bid to 10 grand and see where we end up. That may be nowhere near enough, but uh, we'll try. So let's go to auction. You haven't seen much happening with the 928 for a while, but I'd like to show you what I've done this morning. If you haven't seen the earlier episodes, please go back and have a look. I think some of them are quite fun. A lot happened so far. While the MG's away getting looked at for its electrics, you can see I've spent a bit of time denuding the old petrol motor, ready to come out and go to a new owner, I hope. Look how much space there is there. Just sitting on two engine mounts now, so it rocks. Um, I've disconnected everything I think I need to disconnect to get the thing up in the air. So this afternoon, Matt is going to try and get it out. I don't think there's anything connected left. There's our the engine computer, sorry, the, the engine ignition module was there. The power steering pump has gone from there. The alternator, the starter motor's off. The air pump from here. Nice to see it is nice green coolant, not clear rusty water. Always run coolant, folks. Aircon hoses, high pressure hoses, they're out. It looks like it's pretty clear at the back. How's it going, Maddie? Cheers, how are you? Thank you for working on my my partner Helen's Golf, which is, uh, we managed to crack the sump on that car. That's but, it, yeah. yeah, not good. Anyway, you fixed it, thank you. It wasn't easy. They decided to take the sump off with the engine out of the car, I gather. Yeah, is two that... bolts where you, there's not direct access. The bolt's over here, but the access hole's here. Yeah. So they bolt the sump on, then they put the gearbox in. Uh -huh. So naturally, so... I'm sure, I don't know what the manual say, but... I can almost guarantee it, say, pull the gearbox out. Yeah, anyway. And you've managed to change it without getting it out of the car. Legend, yeah. right there. Well, that's what we try. I'll tell you in about 10 minutes. Okay. If I see a whole lot of big, huge <laughs> puddle of oil on the ground, then I'll know that something didn't go well. Okay, here we go. So there we go. If you haven't been under your 928 for a while, this is what it looks like. In a manual car. Of course, you've got your clutch lever arm here. It's uh, interesting. Here's our power steering attached into the rack. You're going to retain that rack. Just get new boots here to replace these ones that I had it. Uh, I've disconnected these these eight engine mount bolts here. I hope that's enough for it to free up and go up and take the take the whole engine mounts with it. That's the plan. Talk tube, of course, is already gone. Okay. What else we got? So there you go. 
If you haven't had a good look under your 928, it's really 1970s technology if you ask me, but we love them anyway, don't we? Okay, out we come. And of course we've ended up with a box of sometimes hard to find goodies. Power steering pump. Is our, that's the Bosch ignition computer for the early K-Jet cars. Alternator. All this is going to a new owner somewhere. Coil, starter motor, air conditioning compressor. Don't know its status, but these are worth these are worth money. Look at that. In decent condition, not too many cracks. Expansion tank. Can't get them now. Been unavailable for a long time in right-hand drive. So some lucky owner's going to get this nice bunch of stuff. Yes. Let's change that. It's starting to get exciting. I've been using the time to actually come up with a plan for where the batteries might go. And as you can see, this is a huge area, particularly without the radiators here. And that's more than enough to put in a battery box that'll take the entire 18 batteries that we've got out of the MG. I still don't know from a weight balance exercise whether it would be better to put some in the back, some in the front. But the way to do that is to denude this car, get this all out, and then corner weight it and see where we're at. I suspect it'll come down to around 850 kilos uh, with all this stuff out. Virtually about 60% of its original weight. Uh, we'll see, 850, 900 kilos I reckon. But it'd be very interesting to see the front and to rear weight balance and that'll then determine where we put the new components going back in. Obviously if all the batteries go in the front then I've got to put a lot of the other stuff that was in the front of the MG in the back and that'll be interesting. That poses huge implications for the wiring loom. Uh, anyway, that's where we're at. Well, it was a nice plan, but it didn't quite work. Even after we took the back of the bell housing off, there still wasn't enough clearance. So those really hard to access frozen bolts on the top of the engine mounts had to come off. Nobody said it was easy. Glad it's him and not me. <laughs> Trying to get these engine mounts out. We've undone the eight bolts underneath them, but there's still not enough clearance, so it's got to take the 20 mil bolts off the top, or 18s or 20s, whatever they are. This is really interesting because we haven't been in here. Twin plate clutch. Yeah, there's the first disc. Yeah. How does it look? It looks a bit very uneven. Yeah, it... Fibres look odd. I think because it's new, it hasn't actually glazed up yet. Ah. So I think, if you look, you can see where it's had a bit of wear. Oh, on, yeah. See on the outer, it's shiny. Yep. And on the inner, that's yeah. how they're sort of... They come rough, they're not smooth, and you can still see the writing on there. Oh, you reckon it's a new one? Yeah, so, like, see how there's text, um, the printing marks on mm, it? Mm. Once they get a bit of wear, that just rubs off. Okay. So that's is like a brand new sort of one, I'd say. Show us where the paint is getting this thing out. Here are the, the there's eight of these bolts for the hold all the engine mounts in, but they're not the ones you normally do. There's ones on top, aren't there? There's ones on top, but this big bracket here, steel bracket, yeah. It's like a big harbour bridge. It goes over the engine mount. So we can't just jack it up and pull it out. We've got to jack it up the height of that harbour bridge mm. to pull it out. But foolishly, we had the um, uh, bell housing in here. It's, so, not, it's no foolish. It's just yeah. an experience. <laughs> just experience. So anyway, we've got that off. Um, it was quite a short bell housing. It looked like it would have gone. We might have enough clearance. We might have enough clearance now, so... I'm going to keep these. I've put the, I'll put these banjo fittings back on there. Yeah. Keep them. But otherwise, I'd say we will have success now with it coming off. <gasps> I'd say as well. Interesting. Like, you can see that there. This sort of shape where there's a hole, but it's solid. Yeah. It must be for the US. That's like an EGR tube. Oh, yeah. 
um, which we okay, don't which have. Wasn't, which wasn't which wasn't fitted. It's just not they'd machined oh, yes. it out at the yeah. factory, but that's probably for US, I'd say. Mm. Um, which had lower power versions of these cars. So that would have been drilled and had a pipe that made it even more complex. Mm. But luckily for us, we so get the powerful ones. We get the powerful ones, so which we're now giving to somebody else. That's right, the good ones. So we can put a less powerful electric motor in. That's it. Oh no, don't say that. We've done the numbers. So thank you to Ken in the UK and Kurt over in the States, who's obviously an engineer. Um, very nice work, guys. You've done the computations and figured out that the electric motor, despite its puny power output, is likely to be just as fast as a petrol 928S in acceleration 0 to 100. We shall see. All will be revealed in the fullness of time. Right, let's get this engine out. Last century, in my 25 years in the IT industry, I often surmise that the most efficient team size for a development project, even a very large project like this, is two enthusiastic people, one of whom is an optimist. And that's Matt. I'm very grateful that he got involved. Sure, when we lack certain knowledge or skills, we need to team up with the specialists. But I think we will achieve a lot with Matt's let's have a crack at it attitude to almost any task. And so, with a bit more pushing and shoving, out she comes. And the other thing is accepting that some of our ideas, however brilliant we think they are at the time, will fail and will need to backtrack. That's just the way it is. But Matt said we'd get the motor out, no problem, and he was right. He did it. I, I, there's no way on the planet I could have done that by myself. Ah, we got it. Look at that. All that What's space. That? Yeah, it's huge. We can fit 16 packs in there. Well, we, need, we need to fit 18. Oh, we can fit 20 in there now. <laughs> We want the long, long range. Wow! Mate, this is, we've just realised this is the perfect EV conversion car. Look at the size of that. And nice, as you're right, square sided as well. It sure is. Battery box. So there are our engine mounts. That was the piece that we had to come over. Yeah. We had to come over this here. Yeah. I was trying to get this out in the car. Yeah. And even still. Does uh, not apply. We had to like, oh, it's got this lip at the bottom yeah which i mustn't have seen it but anyway it's out so and this is the one that just would not this one just will not go just kept twisting but you can see the corrosion on there it's yeah so we want to wait back as far as possible yep so, so we've got this that sort of stops us yeah um, so from there yeah go forward 850 from there so where does where does that leave you six eight fifty there which is perfect so even, so but say we made it a narrow battery box, so it went somewhere back. Yeah. The 850s here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Width-wise? We've got so far. That's, and it's, so let's say it's got to fit down low, so it's between these, between these shavings here. So we have. 700, we only need 500. Oh, perfect. Okay, if so that's five, good. that's... Now, but height's the killer. Yeah. So if we take these engine mounts out, how are we going for height approximately? Let's say if they're from there. So the here's the washer bottle lid. Yeah, but it tapers down. Yeah. So, so if we can't, if it's finishing here, Yeah. unless it's angled down, which could be a little bit Yeah. from there. What's our what's our minimum height there from, from down uh, there? 430. Yeah, okay. Like we could go lower because, you know, it wouldn't be lower than the factory yep. component. Say we ran it in line, that's, you know, you yep. could probably get 500. Okay. So what that tells us, we can actually run the entire battery pack in the front if we if we want to. Sure. And the advantage of that is that, you know, when we're not running a cooling system that joins the two, it's easier on the wiring. The high voltage wiring is not so long as well. Mm. Uh, but we want to make sure we can still get a, a really optimal weight distribution doing that. Mm. Um, so it's entirely practical, I think. Okay. That's good. Mate, can't Bye, say how right. happy I am, how impressed I am with you. I, didn't drop it on ourselves. No, you didn't catch your fingers. No, no, we've all got 10 fingers. Oh. It's just so tight in there, isn't it? And there's so many obtrusions and like little sharp points and yeah, it's... So I race home just in time for the auction of written off cars. Now these are mainly cars that can never be registered again. And one of the first ones up is this Model Y, which I won't be bidding for as the very long battery won't fit in the Porsche and the motor's an awkward shape as well. What's it worth? Uh, nonetheless, I'll kick this one off at uh, 3,000. I'll take Haas from there. It's only done 4,000 kilometres. At 6,500, 7,500. At 7,500 now, ladies and gentlemen. At 7,500. 
No further interest. I sell it out the door at seven and a half. Sold for seven and a half. Wow, so cheap for virtually a brand new car. This is very encouraging, as coming up next is a Model S dual motor, which could be perfect, as the front and rear motors reach about 190 kilowatts, and I could use either of them, and the battery modules also a great shape. However, it's eight years old, high mileage, can't be inspected, has broken wheels and suspension, the VIN doesn't match the rego plate, and there's a very suspicious looking coolant leak underneath so the battery pack could be damaged. Nonetheless, I reckon it's worth a punt and worth easily 10 grand. Tesla, not a point five guys on the take your hours online for the 15 pack Tesla Model S today. Electric, automatic. Six, six and a half. Is that right if you very back? That's six, carry it out to the hours of line, six, carry it out to the six and a half, six thousand, six and a half, seven thousand back. That's seven thousand, now take it at seven thousand, 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 seven Nine and five people out there. At nine five people out, nine seven fifty now, nine seven fifty now, nine seven fifty now. At nine doesn't seven fifty now, nine seven fifty now, nine seven fifty now. At nine doesn't seven fifty now, nine seven fifty now. Too late, nine seven fifty. I did drop the hammer. Too late. He dropped the hammer as I bid it. Oh, that's so annoying. I clicked bid, but he dropped the hammer. Nine twenty six. I clicked bid, but he dropped the hammer. Nine twenty six. Okay, that's very annoying. That's not to say it was going to stop at 10. It might have carried on a lot more, but dropped my bid in and it was just a little too slow. Yeah, 147,000 Ks though and damage underneath. So we don't know whether the battery pack was okay or not. Hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.